three friends, thousands of movies, a million TV shows, and an infinite number of opinions. This is Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. It rhymes. Every week, we review new releases and spotlight an older film that you just might want to add to your watch list. So hold on to your butts, because here are your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. Welcome back to another episode of Big Screen, Little Screen, and Everything in Between. Guys, we had our 50th episode last week, and I didn't even realize it. How crazy is that? Didn't we mention it in the episode? Well, no, I mentioned it in the, in the, the post. In the post, oh, because, okay. yeah, I... You were too busy yelling at me to realize it was our 50th. <laughs> you know, I did, when I was listening back and editing the episode, I did sound pretty condescending, so I am going to apologize for that. I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> I know you don't care, but I didn't. No. And listening back, I was like, oh, yeah, I do sound a little douchey. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was told by someone, uh, one of our fans, one of the seven, that we should just have you two argue and retitle the show Francesca and Jeremy Argue. And well, then I said, be called and, Jeremy's Always Right. And, no, and then they were like, never. well, what? I was like, well, what would I do? And they were like, nothing. <laughs> and <laughs> you are okay. not needed. That, that really hurt my soul. Oh, honey. You're Frank, needed. Frank is invaluable. He is. Which is a weird word. It is. Because you would think that it's not valuable. Yeah. Yeah. But it's valuable. But it's like the most valuable. Yeah. I would never MVP Frank. <laughs> I I've tried I have stopped trying to figure out the English language. Well it's probably a smart Yeah, that's smart yeah. well beyond my pay grade. But to be fair, that's the whole reason I'm even here, is to argue with you. <laughs> you guys are but, yeah. well, you specifically are Miss Movie Snob, I'm Miss Movie Degree, Ooh La La movies. I am, as you put it, Marvel Bro. <laughs> yes, you said that. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I look. I stand but by no, what I said. I am, the I, just... man. I am the average person who doesn't get as involved and as deep into movies as you do. But I'm still a good time. You are a good time. So here we go. It's all good. Um, and Frank, you're a great time too. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Don't ladies. Worry. Frank's a great time. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Let's move on. Um, all right, we're going to open this one with... Uh, to- Frank and I were discussing this the other night, and we thought it would be kind of a, a fun way to start the episode. Given the absolutely astronomical success of Top Gun Maverick in theaters, we were wondering, do we think it's going to be nominated for any Oscars? And how far will the success of this movie continue to take it? I definitely think it will be. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have to think visual effects, certainly. Mm-hmm. Score, sure. I could see sound and visual effects for sure. Any uh, of the acting categories? I don't think so. That's where I get kind of like, if it is, it's almost like a just a gimme. Like to them, right. Hey, it's like, hey, since you're so big. What about anything from and the... And that's, that's not a, a knock from me on Tom Cruise, because I do think he's a fantastic... Well, everybody was great in the movie. He's a f- Every character yes. was yeah. great Everyone was great, and he just, in general, no matter what you think of him, he's a great actor. I just don't think that there was, like, a meaty enough scene for an acting nomination. Correct. Um, I do think, though, that it's going to get a Best Picture nod. Okay. What it about... won't win, but I do think it'll get a nomination. Makes sense. I think this will be the return of the non, and I say that like you know, uh, Black Panther was nominated, but like the non comic book movie to be nominated that's like also got like huge crossover appeal. Yeah, because it's been a while that we've seen a mega movie like this be in this kind of realm. Do you think anything for like screenplay or? I don't see screenplay. Was this Top Gun redone yeah. and like best director? I don't see that. I, I mean, maybe, but I, do, I still think it's too early to say on that. I mean, look, I, I understand this question is very premature. We're still a good eight months away from... Yeah, but and you, I know we haven't really hit uh, award season yet, right. so to speak, with those it's, movies it's and about, things like it's that. It's about to kick off here yeah, with all the, movies that the film festivals. You love that Jeremy is not a fan of, <laughs> for the most part. But I mean, so I saw this the other day on Fandango on their Twitter account, and they explained that for the month of May, when Top Gun came out, the one of the very last weekends, 
And then June, July, August, it was number one in ticket sales for all of those months. That's insane. That's crazy to think about. Think about the movies that came out. Uh, We had Thor Love and Thunder. We had some other really big films that came out during that time. The Minions movie came out and that was big. Mm -hmm. Um, Was it one of the Sonic movies? It's it's one of those things that used to happen a lot in the past, but recent times... Movies do not go four months. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I I think we all knew that this was going to do really well. But domestically, the movie has, as of recording this anyway, uh, which is Saturday evening, 600 and almost 695 million uh, domestic worldwide total is 1.42 billion. It is currently the sixth highest grossing domestic film of all time. Not adjusted for inflation. Not adjusted for gross or inflation. Yeah. And then when you think about. What's next? Could we get another Top Gun sequel, you think? I don't think we're going to get another I, I, one. I would not Rooster, think so. Rooster, Hangman, Phoenix, anything like that? Like, not involving I, I Tom don't, Cruise? I don't see... I, th- I see that going the Iron Eagle 3, 4, 5, 6 route. Yeah. Where after a certain point, it says people lose interest. Okay. Now, to be fair, with Iron Eagle, people lost interest in Iron Eagle 1. <laughs> they did. A lot of people don't even know what that movie is or that it exists, honestly. It's Top Gun. Yeah. Sort of. Same year. It's the lesser it's, known. It's one of those Steps child. Two movies, same year, similar plot. One does well, one not so much. Yeah. Deep Impact Armageddon. I think the, for me, the biggest kind of special note, or you know, I'm, I'm missing the word here that I want, but the thing that I'm I'm most drawn to within uh, Top Gun Maverick and its success is. The fact that while it is, you know, a sequel and and a legacy sequel, its success still proves, one, the viability of Tom Cruise, and two, that movies like that, that are just big blockbuster movies and not related to comic books or, you know, Marvel, DC, whatever, still have a place in our theaters. Well, Tom Cruise honestly has never lost his... Tom Cruise-ness. He's he's a major draw, for the most part, consistently his whole career. For the most part, yes. However, there's still some some of his smaller movies, things like American Made a few years ago, which critically did very well, but financially did not. That one I liked. Yeah. But no, I mean, to 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 the point, though, he's he's still very bankable, still very A-list, still very... Everything he does... For the most part. Yeah. Obviously, he's not 100%, but he's he's damn near 90%. And I, I guess I wanted to to see the success of this as a way for to, to speak to his viability outside of the Mission Impossible franchise. Right. And I'll say, and in, in even you know, kind of more on that, the biggest thing, and again, it's before your time, so to speak, mm-hmm. Top Gun was huge. Yeah. So this movie is living off, you know, how large of a pop culture sensation Top Gun the original oh, was. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have that entire audience. Every single person who saw Top Gun watched this one. Yeah. Now they're bringing their kids And there are to watch so many one. people going multiple times to the I, theater. And that's also kind of a unique thing about this one where... It, it has a Titanic thing where it's... It does. And you, and you just want to keep going and keep seeing comparison it. comparison film right there with that. Yeah. So Glenn Powell, who plays um, Hangman in the film, has admitted as much that his parents have seen the movie 14 times in theater. It's... He, he actually jokes that the movie is making his family bankrupt. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. I think they're going to be all right. But no, it is a movie that you could watch again and again because the action is so good. Yeah, I mean, we went you're, and saw it a second time, and you're it not going to get fantastic. bored watching this. Hundred no. percent. It's so well executed, and yeah, I mean, I don't want to like. It's obviously the movie of the summer, but I just I hope it carries the on year? more than that. It, yeah, for sure. I think it is the movie of the year. I don't. I mean, yes, we're in September now, and but I know there's still nothing, a lot to come. But I mean, only thing I could even possibly top at this point would be what Black w- Panther, Wakanda, Wakanda Forever. Yeah, um, maybe, but I still, I don't. I don't see it. I, I think Top Gun it. is the champ this year. Yeah, I think Wakanda Forever will be a huge financial success, but I yes. don't think it will topple Maverick. No, I think I think Top Gun at this point, I'm ready to crown it. Yeah, 
I mean, you're looking at an all-decade movie, like with those numbers and what we've saw and things Again, like that. Again, even the best Marvel movies have never done you no know, number one for four months straight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, continuously, it, right. it wasn't number one each week, but the fact that each month it was oh, number at, one at in the sales. end of the month. Yeah, the, end of the, month. the most ticket sales. Yeah, it's just insane to think about. Uh, also today being September 4th, this is National Cinema Day. So I don't know if you got, or September 3rd, I'm sorry. September 3rd. Uh, a lot of the movie theaters were doing $3 movies. Uh, also $3 snacks, $3 drinks. Do you think that they should offer these kind of discount offerings more often? One, one Saturday a month, one, one time to kind of like drive people back into the cinema and then tr- like reinvigorate the crowd to going back out. Do you think that this was just a one-time thing, or if they see benefits, you think they'll continue to do something like this? It certainly can't hurt. I mean, if they got an influx, yeah, I mean, by we, all means, we know Regal's something. in trouble. They are considering parent companies considering Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. So yeah, yeah that's so I, not I, ideal. I would not mind them doing something like this more. Maybe not every month, but you know, every other month or, or something. Well, I've said for years that theaters as a whole need to change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot current... of the theaters around us need to be updated by yes. major yeah. levels. <laughs> yeah. And even just continue to be maintained. One yeah. of the theaters that we go to consistently because of it has it had the very nice recliners mm-hmm. and the, the tables and the great seats with the the butt kicker sound and all that kind of stuff. But some of the seats move a little slower now. Some of the uh, footrests are a little jiggly. Uh, some of the speakers don't work as well, so the vibration's not as great. It's a little frustrating that you spend all of that money to upgrade it and then just let it go to poop as opposed to continue to maintain it and reinvest because it's those type of experiences that people have that make them think, I'll just watch it at home. Absolutely. Which... Yeah, we've discussed many times. Yeah. I'm that guy. I yeah. know. I, Jeremy's. If you ever got a tattoo, I think it would say, "I'll just watch it at home." I'll just watch it at home. <laughs> I'll just watch it at home. Which is so frustrating. And then you can just me. show it to Francesca. I, and I don't understand why. It's so much more comfortable. What am I missing? Well, I'm okay. not missing any. No, other here, than the audience, which I doesn't necessarily I appeal to me. For you, it's a little bit more unique than for the average cinema goer because you have surround sound, you have a great TV, you've got a really great setup. So you watching a movie at home. Which is why I built it the way I built it. I know. For that reason. But I guess in just in general for me, a movie theater is like going to church. For me. This and this so episode it, is sponsored by Dolby Atmos. <laughs> And so it's just hard for me to wrap, even with a great setup at home, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around. The only advantage you that. have over me is you do see things months before I do. Yes. And there are certain movies that and I'm not going to wait. I'm a very impatient person. So, like, I can't wait. I am so patient. That's why I'm still talking <laughs> to you now. I know. Uh, but just in general, I get, I can kind of easily more easily swallow you watching a movie at home than i can like the average person because they've got like a standard tv and non surround and i'm just like no <laughs> like that's not no, how it's meant to be i mean i definitely do enjoy that audio sensory thing yeah. of the theaters yes i'm a huge audio guy so i love that kind of stuff i love the bass i love the, all the stuff around me the rumbling the bouncing off the s- yeah. ceilings which is why I have what I have. Because I want to experience that. That's, that is, for me, the main draw for a theater. Yeah. So if so, I can cut out the middleman, that's what I'm doing. So I guess from for you, like when I'm, my argument with you is just that, that patience thing. Because like I can't handle waiting. Whereas with other people, it's like, but you don't have a great TV yeah. and you don't have surround sound and you're just like, yeah. all your lights are on and you've got your phone next to you. Because like, I know when you're watching something, you watch something. Yeah, I'm not one of you kids who can't put the damn phone down. The average person, and Frank and I have this issue. Yes, you do. Has their phone next to them and gets easily distracted. So that's another reason for me that I'm like, no, you've got to go to the theater. What I'll do then, I'll put a little box next to my couch. You come over, put your phone in the box, we'll watch TV and movies together. <laughs> Great. Um, so just when I for... want to pay attention, like when we watch like Prey, when something is like, oh, I need to, when we watch Game of Thrones or when we watch House of the Dragon, 
It goes it goes away. I've seen you on your phone during House of the Dragon. Well, I've never not seen you on your phone when, when you watch something here. Yeah. I can do it. But I've, I've not seen this. So you struggle. I've According, not seen this. I and I definitely don't pull it out at theaters. You know no, that for you don't. a fact. We're, I, we're yeah, very, very, good, very about, good about that. Yeah. So I to to my point about people going to the theaters. Oh go ahead. I'll say I will not go to see a movie with Frank in a theater if Frank has already seen the movie. Oh yes. Because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hey, you happened to see The Lost City with me when I had already seen it, and I did not ruin that. I know that more don't, often than yeah. not, though. <laughs> Definitely do not see a comedy with me because I will. You're literally you're you're you'll pre laugh and then you'll do the lines as they're doing the lines yes. on the screen. Yeah. I don't do that. I yes, don't you absolutely do, do yes, that. Yes, you do. <laughs> I am offended we are that both you guys would say to this. <laughs> um. <clears throat> I just I want to go back to the box office numbers for Maverick really quick before we move on though. Well, I just wanted to talk about theater goers real quick. Okay. Only eight percent of respondents in a Statista dot com poll that I found said that they go to the movies often. Eight percent. Yeah. Thirty three percent said sometimes. Hey, guess what? You guys are eight percent. We, we are. We really are. Thirty three percent said sometimes. Forty one percent said rarely. Eighteen percent said never. So that means almost sixty percent of the people in this. Um, said rarely or never that they go to the theater. So that's yeah. that's huge. <clears throat> that's a heartbreaker right there. Um, all right. So just yeah, going back, I've got one final question with regards to Maverick and, and its financial success. As I said, it's currently sixth all-time domestic behind uh, Black Panther, Avatar, Spider-Man No Way Home, Avengers Event. Avengers Endgame and the number one domestic, which was Star Wars Episode Seven: Force Awakens. Um, I don't see it jumping enough to beat Avatar, which was at 760 million uh, from its current standpoint at 694. I think an additional 60 is out of reach, but I think it's going to beat Black Panther maybe even this weekend because it only needs another 6 million to beat Black Panther. I did like 4 million last weekend still. It's insane. Now, last weekend, the box office totals were atrocious. Abysmal, yeah. yeah. And this is Labor Day weekend, so it maybe... Is. Yeah, and especially Maybe. with today being three dollar cinema day, mm-hmm. so it's possible that people and they they I saw some media for it going back in theaters and some push and things like that. So yeah, wild, crazy wild. to think about. Anyway, uh, moving in to our next topic, I want to do a little bit of a fall movie preview. As we said, we are kicking into film festival season. We are starting the to... The most wonderful time of the year. It's my favorite season, award season. Um, Yawn. As, as everything gets going. Oh, that is a great joke from Shit's Creek, yeah. though. You know that. <laughs> with that being... Again, I'm going to stop saying with that being said. I said okay. that way too much. You do. I know I say that too much. So... Okay. With that in mind, <laughs> I do think there is one movie that will be in the awards talks that I do want to see, which I think we'll discuss a little later here. Yes, I think it's um, in the the list here coming up soon. A couple of just quick ones in September that we don't really need to dive into, but that I I want to say I'm excited for. And per Frank's uh, requirement, these are all coming out post September 21st, which is the official first day of fall. Uh, we have this the, is true. <laughs> the Marilyn Monroe uh, pick Blonde, Blonde on Netflix, uh, directed by Andrew Dominic and starring Anna DeArmas as Marilyn Monroe. The movie that I know Jeremy is most excited for, Hocus Pocus 2, going to Disney+. Plus. Well, I actually thought you were going to make a, a, like a sincere statement. The movie I'm most wanting to see, Blonde, yes. Really? Well, oh, absolutely. Okay. Marilyn Monroe? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I mean, I... I I get it, but I just didn't. It looks it's a it's a little more artsy than your usual. It's a seventeen. I'd be fine. <laughs> Which the the cast is not happy about. Um, and then we've also got Bros. The uh, what? But no, Hocus Pocus two. That is. I know, I know. Uh, that one's coming out September thirtieth on Disney Plus. Don't care. I'm very excited about it. You and Riley can watch that together. I'll leave. One hundred percent. I'm so excited. Uh, Burroughs uh, is coming out September 30th, directed by Nicholas Stoller, who did Forgetting Sarah Marshall, co-written and starring Billy Eichner, who I absolutely adore. It could be funny. It I, looks... actually, I think it will be. I actually have 
uh, early skiing passes. Do you want to go with me? Sure. We'll go together. Yeah. Leave her home. We'll yeah. go. It's, it's yeah, I have a work event, so I can't go. She's not going to be able to go. Uh, it would be a blast. <laughs> yeah. No, it actually looks pretty funny. It does. So. Um, all right. So let's dive into some more of the bigger stuff that I'm really psyched about. And first up, I think, is the one you, that, Jeremy, you want to talk about. Triangle of Sadness. So you would classify this as definitely an awards... 100%. Era type show. This premiered at uh, the Cannes Film Festival in May, and it won the Palme d'Or, which is the top prize at Cannes. It looks great. It does. And I'm not that artsy film <laughs> noir guy. Yeah. But that one does look very entertaining. It's. It seems to be. I mean, you and right for the times. For it's, sure. Uh, it's definitely a a a commentary and a bit of a skewering of. The rich and you know privileged of the world, uh, starring Woody Harrelson's probably the biggest name domestically. He's the only name that I would know. Yeah, there's some other um, like European cast that are kind of up and coming, and unfortunately, one of the actresses in the film who is kind of up and coming. I guess she was on the show Black Lightning on the CW. Char B. Dean Kriek, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, um, passed away recently. She was only like 31, I think. That's not um, good. Of a mysterious illness. We don't really have very much details, but I'd heard something, but yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. Yeah, really, really big bummer just ahead of this movie that I'm sure is gonna be pretty big throughout awards season and I'm hoping will be a success in theaters. I mean it looks very dark, which yeah. I love. I love dark comedies. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm just a psychopath. Who knows? Yeah. I enjoy a good dark comedy. And this has all the makings of that. Essentially, the, the premise seems to be a lot of very uh, wealthy, beautiful people on a yacht cruise that uh, they get hit by a storm. The ship goes, you know, has a bunch of stuff break down. Uh, a lot of them get sick and then they end up stranded on some random island where I'm sure all their privilege is going to work just fine. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> nothing wrong. So, <laughs> nothing wrong will happen. Their their first world problems go right out the window, and they're faced with some real world problems. Um, and I'm sure it's great. Yeah. You, you likened it to Lord of the Flies. It could yeah, be. It we don't much. know how. Yeah, how mean, dark it gets. It definitely doesn't seem like Gilligan's Island, as you mentioned as well. Like I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have, yeah. You know, you, yeah, you might have thing. those people, but I don't think they're going to be. You got Ginger and Marianne making coconut phones and having fun. No, I see more Lord of the Flies. Yeah, yeah. I see it going down a very dark hole, which eh, could be good. Could be yeah, fun. I mean, we'll we'll see how. I, like you said, I think it's going to be a dark comedy, and. Uh, I, I think it'll be... Is really it weird that I want them timely. to go really dark and just go full, just... No. Why not? Sometimes we need that. Yeah. Uh, so that one's coming out October 7th, and it's directed by Ruben Ostland, whose last uh, film was The Square. That one also won the Cannes Palme d'Or, so both of his films have had... I've never heard of The Square. It's so. a it's a foreign film. Um, so he likes geometry, apparently. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Next uh, will be The Circle of Happiness. <laughs> Uh, also in October, uh, we've actually got October 21st has three major releases that I wanted to bring up. The School for Good and Evil, directed by Paul Feig, that's coming out on Netflix, uh, starring Charlize Theron and Carrie Washington. And it looks kind of, it's based on a series of books. And I don't know, it looks like a fun little like fantasy young adult. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, you had me at Charlize. I know. <laughs> you had me at books. Frank, what about you? Do you have anything else for? So there's there's two. Yeah. One of my most anticipated is the Sun. This is Hugh Jackman and Vanessa Kirby. It's Florian Zeller who did the Father. So that one's much later in the year. I'm, I was going chronologically. But... Oh, I don't, I don't have <laughs> chronology. I thought still it was September. I thought this was in October or November. It's November 11th. Um, this looks to be awesome. I I really enjoyed the Father, Laura Dern, and. Anthony Hopkins is back. I'm, I don't think he's playing the same Jackman. character. No. Hugh Jackman, Vanessa Kirby. Are you talking about the son? Yeah. Yes. I missed, son. The, I missed yeah. the first part. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Jeremy. Yes. <laughs> Directed uh, by Florian Zeller. Uh, yes, who his last film was The Father and won Anthony Hopkins the Oscar for Best Director for Best Actor. Sorry. So yeah, yes. Really, ex really excited for that. Also very excited for the menu. Yes. That was um, the that next on my list. Yeah. 
November 18th, starring Nicholas Holt, Anya Taylor Joy, Ray um, Fines, Ray Fines, John Leguizamo. Um, oh God, what, looks like another Janet dark something. Yeah, comedy craziness. Yeah, you know what's weird is like up until recently, Nicholas Holt was always like that guy. I knew I knew him somewhere, but I knew yeah. who he was until you had me watch The Great. Yeah, and now it's like everything he does, I want to watch. Good, I'm glad. So <laughs> this. 100% yes. is on the list. The um, cast is amazing. And then last but not least, definitely not least, is Devotion. Devotion comes out November 23rd. It stars Jonathan Majors and Glenn Powell. Is uh, he playing Hangman again? He's not, but he is playing a pilot. Uh, they are pilots in the Korean War, and Jonathan Majors is uh, kind of dealing with being one of the only, if not the only, black pilot on at least this this squadron. This squadron, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it looks to be like his devotion to this job that he wants to do, which is be a fire, fighter pilot. Mm -hmm. The trailer has me amped for this yeah. every time I for see it. For some reason, theaters. I've not seen that yet. It is. It looks it sounds awesome. interesting. And uh, another thing, like Korea is, and it, they mentioned it in the uh, the Forgotten War. You know, fifty thousand American soldiers passed. Very much so. Just kind of gets glazed over in history, but in between. World War II and Vietnam, but just another horrific situation. We'll come back to that in a minute, but a good segue. Another movie coming out in September called The Greatest Beard Run Ever. Yes. Which yeah. also looks good. Does also look... Have you seen the trailer for that one yet? I have, yeah. Okay. Zac Efron, right? A, Delivering a, a beer. shaggy Zac Efron. Yeah. <laughs> What's it about, Jeremy? Tell us. So basically, yeah, he's just... Um, and again, not to cut off the whole... No, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, no, it's just a it's a guy who just in America sees all the protests going on about Vietnam War and just like all of a sudden has an epiphany that he wants to like you know, uplift the spirit of the troops and bring them beer. Mm -hmm. So he arranges to bring beer to his friends in Vietnam, and obviously chaos and hilarity ensue. Of course, <laughs> uh, Russell Crowe's in it too, right? Yes, he he's <laughs> I, I think he's the pilot that brings him over. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure how much of a. Yeah, I guess it's based on a true story, and that's what I saw. Based yeah. on which. Whenever I read based on a true story, yeah, you never know how realistic that is. I mean, it could be but, like some guy had that thought, and that's the basis of this true yeah, story. Yeah. So, uh, devotion, just really quick. That's based on a book that I know was really successful, and Glenn Powell, I believe, was pretty instrumental in like the development. He he really wanted to be a part of this movie. Yeah. So, I I know that there have been some screenshots of Jonathan Majors because he's in the next Creed film, and he looks massive yeah and everybody's talking about like how the avengers are going to be fucked yeah trying to fight this guy because he looks like a tank right now so, so. they're doing a third creed yes they are yeah hmm. michael b jordan is producing i think uh this time and they are bringing jonathan majors in as the as the fighter or yeah. it could be drago this time i don't remember one of the, something like that but jonathan majors is involved and he looks huge and i'm all for the next one in that. So franchise. King the Conqueror is going to be huge by the time yeah. he gets the oh, yeah. world. Yeah. Um, going back to the October 21st date that I mentioned for School of Good and Evil, um, I also want to mention Ticket to Paradise starring uh, Julie Roberts and George Clooney, which looks like a cute little rom com. And Caitlin Deaver. And Caitlin Deaver. And then we also have uh, The Banshees of In Inishern, which is directed by Martin McDonough and I believe written by him as well, uh, reteaming with his In Bruges cast members, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. Have you seen the trailer for this? Okay. He hasn't even heard of this. Two points, not Gryffindor. Yeah. Not only have I heard of this, I fell asleep watching the trailer. No, you did not. It is wow. so boring. Wow. That is um, heresy. The gauntlet thrown out again. Have you seen In Bruges? I have not. I yeah, I tried. It's not not for me. Okay. It's not for me. I, 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 it's not one of the ones that I like. love. Like, I know of it. Really I know it, what it is. Yeah. This one, I, like I tried it. to watch the trailer and it just... Uh, fast forward, fast forward, um, fast forward. Just nothing caught my attention. I, I'm i interested, but I'm also a really big fan of Do you know what else comes out Wilson. October 21st? Black what? Adam. Are we not yeah. jazzed for that? That's not on my list for anticipated. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like a pile of... I don't want to be too mean to The Rock because he could literally break me in half, but this does not look good. Yeah, Marvel Bros says no to Black yeah. Adam on October 21st. Hard yeah. pass. <laughs> I think we might have a better shot getting you to see 
the movie that I can't pronounce that Francesca oh. just said. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not true. No? Like, if it was one or the other? It's Black Adam. Oh, all okay. Day. All day. <laughs> Yikes. What about, all right, what else do you have on your list, Jeremy? Amsterdam. Yes. You've told me about the cast for this film. Have you not seen the cast for this film? This is coming out, what, uh, I think October 7th? Yeah. The cast is ridiculous. The cast is you ridiculous. Seen... See, we have, we have, see, Frank avoids trailers, so I can't mention trailers, in, but Francesca, you've seen the trailer. So here's the thing with Amsterdam. Incredible cast, like we said. We've got Christian Bale, Margot Robbie. T-Swizzle. Um, T-Swizzle, yes. The, not um, the draw. <laughs> oh, Do God. you want me to keep going? Yes. yes. Just... John David Washington, Anya Taylor-Joy, Michael B. Jordan, Rami Malek, Bobby De Niro, Chris Rock, Mike Myers, Timothy Oliphant. I mean, come on. Yes. Come on. But it's a David O. Russell movie, and he is a creepo, and there's, like, some stuff about him, like, abusing his niece, and it's, uh, like, ugh. I didn't know all that. That's I didn't either. Yeah. So, but Because I liked The Fighter. Yeah. I didn't love it. I yeah. liked it. But I no. mean, look, he's had a reputation as being an asshole for a long time, uh, but some of the recent stuff that's come out has been a little worse i mean no one has a worse really but no one has a reputation of being an asshole but people still want to work with them you can tell me if i'm wrong here as i'm sure you will yeah i understand your standpoint you don't want to see the movie because of something he did Mm -hmm. my counter argument is always going to be he's one person this cast and crew is a thousand other people who did good work that deserve to be seen and recognized yeah that's it. I mean, nothing. I think for me, I will end up watching it for that reason. But I, it's not amongst my anticipated because of. Right. I, I get that. And again, yeah. it's not just, it's not to just, just diminish your right. kind of thought process. But it's just like, for me, it's like, I'm not going to not see something because of one person. Yeah. I will not not see The Flash because Ezra Miller is in Cuckoo Land right now. Right. Because there are, again, hundreds, if not thousands of people that worked hard on that film. I think and you can. Deserve. I think it's also a, a little harder for that that argument with this one, given that he directed and wrote the film. So, like, it's his movie. Yes, but I mean, like, he's not going to get. Uh, he'll probably won't get points on the back end. So, seeing it now, he's already been paid. Right. Right. So, like, anything that happens now is more again out of the people who will in recognition to them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm there to watch them. I get it. I'm not there to watch him yeah. for what he did. I'm never thinking about him as I'm watching the movie. I'm thinking about the character or the actor in front of me on the screen. I get that. So, and then anything I, else? What did we miss? Um, yeah. So a couple other things. The uh, weird, the Al Yankovic story starring uh, looks fun. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. It does look really. He's coming fun. to Orlando soon on tour. Weird, weird Al. Weird Al or, yeah. or, or Daniel Radcliffe? Not, not Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> weird Al. The original. It does look really fun, that movie. Um, That's definitely a watch-at-home movie. Yeah. And I will watch it. Yeah. It's, sure. It's a fun little bi- bi- music biopic. biopics. Yeah. We mentioned Wakanda Forever. That drops on November 11th. Um, the one that I am personally most excited for is The Fablemans, also dropping November 11th, directed by Steven Spielberg and written uh, with, by Tony Kirshner, who teamed with Spielberg on West Side, West Side Story. Story. This is a semi-autobiographical film for Spielberg. It's going to be his most personal one yet. I believe Michelle Williams is in it, playing his mother. So I am just, I mean, as a Spielberg girl, like, I'm very, very excited. So, so you, you really are a, a Spielberg, I, Spielberg girl. Through and through. So, like, Jaws and Jurassic Park were not semi-autobiographical for, <laughs> for Steven Spielberg? No, and surprisingly, E.T. wasn't either. Oh, but... man. Wouldn't that have been so much cooler if <laughs> but that Indiana was based Jones. on a true story? Indiana Jones. Indiana was... Jones is 100% Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yes. With a whip. I, I know that <laughs> yeah. for a fact. Yeah. So I'm, I'm psyched for that now, one. Now, speaking of Francesca movies, okay. I don't know when it comes out, but I saw a trailer. I'm like, this movie looks awful. Oh, God. For me. <laughs> Francesca's gonna love it. What is it? After Ever Happy. Oh, this is the after series of movies which I haven't watched. But your, your saw, daughter might have. But no, I, I saw the trailer. This is a you movie. <laughs> this is definitely not but a none me of movie. The, like none of the other like after movies I've been a, 
I haven't been interested in. Yeah, I didn't know there were other after movies. Yeah. This is like the third one, I think. So. Anyway. What about Halloween Ends? Oh, the Monsters. 14th. The mm-hmm. Monsters? Yeah. No. Not, oh, not going to talk about that? No. no. Um, I am very excited. Although I don't think this is within the window that Frank wants. But Barbarian, which is the new uh, horror movie I'm very excited about. Also, like the Woman King, September sixteenth, just yeah. before the cutoff as well, looks Viola awesome. Viola Davis is my queen. Yeah. It looks, it just looks like a really fun time and hope really powerful film. We've also got She Said coming out November eighteenth, starring Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan, which is the Harvey Weinstein picture. Essentially, it's about the journalist who broke who the story. Who broke the story? This looks awesome. I'm very, very. It's interested. going to be if you like Spotlight, if you liked All the King's Men. Anything like that, Frost Nixon, I feel like it's going to be yeah. like that right. journalistic slash. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully better than the post. Not that I didn't like the post. It just wasn't. I felt like it was a rush Spielberg work. Not my favorite of his work. Yeah. Because no. I, I think he was spending more time on Ready Player One. Yeah, it was yeah. a rushed yet slow movie. A little bit. Right. Yeah. And it, it, they did important work, but this looks to be really good. So I'm I'm excited for that one as well. Agreed. Um, and then before I name my last few, do you have any more ones that you want to talk about, Jeremy? Stuff that I'll probably watch that you won't. Okay. Samaritan. What? I don't know what that is. Exactly. Remind me. You, you don't know this. Okay. It's on Prime. <laughs> I think it comes out like next week or so. Oh. Or maybe this week even. Then well, it doesn't it's not qualify. Fall. It's not a fall. Movie. Well, it's, it has to be after September 22nd. Well, I'll watch it September 23rd. How about that? <laughs> there you go. I'll allow it. Uh, it's a new um, Sylvester Stallone. Oh. Oh. I do know about this. Retired superhero. Yeah, comes I do out know about retire- this. So. Okay. That's, that's interesting. Oh, more superhero stuff from the Marvel bro. What, what about a... <laughs> what about... Okay. Okay. I'll go all film snob, film snob on you then. How about Sydney on Apple TV? Sydney, the life and times of Sydney Portier. Oh, yes. Looks. I don't didn't know about this. Oh, but you're the snob. You should know I these know, things. No, I should. Uh, it's just a, a biography of him. Yeah, that looks terribly interesting. Awesome. So, I'm I'm very interested in that. So, I think it's September 10th, which is I'm sorry, a week before Frank's deadline yeah. or two weeks. Doesn't qualify, Does Frank. What qualify. about you? Anything else before I name my last three? Um. Probably ones that you're end up going to name. I know Bones and All is one that you like really yeah, excited Luca for. Luca Guadagnino, Bones, uh, Dogs and Harmony. Di- what? <laughs> directed by Luca Guadagnino and starring Timothy Chalamet and Taylor Russell. This is like a a young adult cannibals love story. Okay, you just lost from, me at a I lot know. of the things. <laughs> from a lot I, of the things. From what I'm reading online, um, but it got an eight and a half minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival this week. And I'm just very interested because I love you do you. all of the players involved. I love none of the players involved. <laughs> the Whale. Yes. So The Whale premiered today um, at the Venice Film Festival, directed by Darren Aronofsky and starring Sadie Sink and, and Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Frazier. Yes. He, have you seen the stills? I have seen the stills. He is getting massive praise and even just in the the early reactions that i've read on twitter today for from the premiere of the film he might be the front runner for the best actor oscar which i'm i'm so happy that's happening for him yeah because he was so excited about batgirl yes he really was yeah he was all like i know and like wah 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 such a heartbreaker michael keaton i mean no it's it's a real heartbreaker so i'm glad he has this not a bad fallback i am genuinely just so emotionally happy like if he gets an oscar nomination i it, like it's so past has due he and ever? I'm, no I, he I, never I has think, no. and he's he's just such a bright wonderful soul and i i grew up loving him and i'm just i want what? only good things for him which is why i'm so surprised you've never watched doom patrol yeah i i have no reason that. i have no reason that i haven't watched it yet and but. it's 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 DC, so not Marvel, bro. <laughs> but no, it's it's a very quirky, strange, and you like everybody in the show. You like, I know. If you watch the cast, everybody there you like, and I'm, it's it's your brand of quirkiness. Yeah, you should watch it. And then the last one that I want to mention, the Good Nurse. This looks awesome. Eddie Redmayne, Jessica Chastain. They play nurses. 
It's directed by <laughs> doctor. Tobias Lindholm. Um, I'm just going <laughs> to give you a short little like it's medical drama slash crime thriller slash heroin and pair movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm in for that. So it seems like maybe Eddie Redmayne isn't as good as a nurse as everybody thinks, and he might be doing some suspect things when it comes to what he's doing. And Jessica Chastain may or may not have to be the hero to save the world. Interesting. So. Um, the last one that I wanted to bring up is just a, a really fun one. Disenchanted, the sequel to Enchanted is finally coming, starring Amy Adams, uh, Patrick Dempsey's back. We've got Maya Rudolph this time as our villain, and I'm I'm psyched. Sounds so, fun. Yeah. The first one's just a good time. It is a good time. So I'm excited to, to visit yeah. these characters again. And <clears throat> I'd be remiss if I didn't say Till, but it's going to like, that's one that I'll see once file it away as like horrible like for that yeah like what actually took place but really powerful and necessary I, which it's one the it's Emmett about Emmett movie. Uh. i argued with myself about whether or not to put it on this list because i just emotionally i don't know if if i need it i guess it's it, gonna be rough that almost seems long overdue at this point 1955 kind of, yeah, yeah. So. so i don't know i just i feel like i don't need another movie about the horrific things that have happened to black people in America. Um, and I just, it's, it's a heartbreaking thing and I don't ever want us to forget it. I just don't know that I can watch that movie. That's fair. I just think that it, it bears like mentioning in the, yeah. in a, in a fall movie preview. Cause it, I think it's going to be important. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to some of the stuff that we watched this week. Uh, really quickly, Frank and I finished Miss Marvel and I just want to say that Jeremy's crazy. This show is fantastic. It's my third favorite of all the MCU shows. Jeremy's fine. It's, it's perfectly okay. <laughs> Not third. It's my third favorite. It's the sixth out of six. Although Later. Moon Knight is like right with it. Like depending on my mood, I could switch You're that. You're probably going fourth or fifth, right? Uh, yeah, probably right around there. So my, if he's fourth or fifth and I'm sixth, Jeremy's not that far off. But again, for me, it's razor thing. Like, it's not like a situation where it's like one, two, three, four, five, pause, six, which is kind of how we feel that you feel about the film. Maybe that's inaccurate or not the film, the Let's series. Let's put it this way. It's now down to seven. Yeah. <laughs> With She-Hulk. But yeah. See, so quickly. Yeah. That you got... She-Hulk is better. So... I, we haven't watched She-Hulk yet. We have not watched any of the episodes of She-Hulk. But I, I think just, you'll like it. It's, how many it's episodes been, have you watched? The three that are the out. Three that are out. Three okay. that are out. It's way quirkier, way funnier. Yeah. More fun, tongue-in-cheek kind of stuff. Okay. Plus, don't I mean, don't they lean on having Ruffalo in early on? Like, isn't that kind of like cheating? You got Smart Hulk. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's some other cameos as well. That's what I'm saying. I feel like Disney tried harder with this. That like Miss oh, Marvel. There's, uh, you've like, got a, you've got Abomination. You've got you know yeah. Megan the Stallion. You've got Tatiana yeah. Maslany herself. Yeah. So yeah, it's they do try harder. I guess. <laughs> yeah. There's and, more cam. A Wong from. Yeah. Well, he's dealing with he's teaching Abomination, so that would yeah. make sense. So you'll love those connections, and it, it's definitely a tie-in to yeah to that scene from the movie. It's it's a better show. It's more fun. Well, we'll see once we oh, watch. You will. You'll say, Jeremy, you're right. It is more fun. I had so much fun with Miss Marvel. You'll have more fun so. with, with She-Hulk. I guarantee it. Uh, yeah, I really like Miss Marvel. And uh, In fact, they're so short. I will watch the first episode while you're here tonight. If okay. you can. We have to get to the puppos, but yeah. maybe another time. Maybe. Cool. <laughs> I finished The Sandman on Netflix. Jeremy, have you started this yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So this is based on the graphic novel by Neil Gaiman. Um, it stars... You're such a comic nerd. Oh my God. I swear to God. <laughs> stars Tom Sturridge. Of All she talks about. Bull comic Bull books, Brooks, comic books, graphic novels, Patton comic books. Patton Oswalt. Uh, and then we've got appearances by Jolie Richardson, David Thewlis, and Gwendolyn Christie. David Thewlis shows up again? And and Jolie Richardson. And both Jolie of, Richardson. Yeah. Both you know me and Patton Oswalt. <laughs> They're both in our spotlight Yeah, Patton film. Oswalt does the voice of the Raven in this. Um, oh, cool. So here's the thing with The Sandman. I enjoyed it very much. I have not read the graphic novel, so I'm not familiar enough to say, like, if the adaptation is, you know, appropriate or, or good, whatever. But I thought 
I liked the Sandman, but there was a lot of potential to be better that I don't know if it reached. And also Tom Sturridge as the Sandman, like the dream master, he, he spends the whole show just talking like this and... Why don't we? Oh, the monotone Ben is he very sleepy? <laughs> Maybe he's just tired and, all the time. Exactly, and it's like even when he's like talking to so villains, Eeyore he's like, is the main character like, of kind of yeah. Because even when, when he's like Ben Stein's really, money, <laughs> really upset, he's just like, I will end you now. <laughs> it's just like okay. this is not a ringing endorsement. <laughs> It, maybe that's how the character is. Maybe. In the, I mean, and I think I mean, Tom Sturridge is great, but it's essentially how Hannibal Lecter is for most of the time. Right? Mm, no, he has inflection. Uh, he, yeah. But for the most part, he's very dry in how he delivers things. <laughs> I, I don't Hello, know, Clary. But the rest With of nice the fancy. like the cast around him is really interesting and unique. So I will watch it. Okay, it's just a matter of when. When, yeah. Um, I will not watch it. I know. I also watched the first two episodes that have just dropped for the Lord of the Rings series, The Rings of Power. Okay, guys. Just so the audience knows here, I am talking to two non-Lord of the Rings fans, which... I'm indifferent. I like them. I just don't love them. I don't understand. I am not indifferent. I'm just not impressed. I don't understand how that's possible. I, I really need you to get to Return of the King. If you so get you to haven't Return even of... watched all of them? I've watched eight hours, which is what? One movie? Two movies? Yeah, uh, one and a half. Yeah, I, I've put my time in. See, I spent no, at you least... Gotta, you gotta get to the war. In I've spent full 24 hours. Yeah. Return of the King will change your perception on the I, other two films. And... And you guys both know this. There's no reason why I shouldn't like. I'm there not really. Being, I'm isn't. not being difficult here. I don't understand it. It doesn't matter because it does seem like it's right up your alley. Right. So that should say something that I don't like it, and it should. You're definitely an outlier in that, though. Oh, I know. I I've never made claims that I am right. You guys, this is the right. worst thing ever. You guys, are no. I I get the appeal. I mean, I spend it one day a year rewatching the extended editions of the movies. One full day. Yes. <sighs> Always. No. <laughs> I love them. I have not. No. So just, just I say all of that to say that I was very excited for the Rings of Power series. This is on Amazon Prime. They spent nearly a billion dollars in the production of this show. And it shows. The like each episode is like its own movie. the The production quality is each episode incredible. four hours long. No, they're like an hour. And did they did they go back to the Shire, to New Zealand to shoot and yes. on location? They, the yeah. Shire, in the Shire. This is set. I think it's more Middle Earth centuries before. Like the it it basically it's takes... House of the Dragon. So it's it's playing out in real time. Then can I talk? Centuries in yes. the making. <laughs> So far, the only two characters that have carried over, we have Galadriel and Elrond, um, the elves. There are Spanish elves? <laughs> no. Like Hubbard, Elrond. <laughs> what she elf. said. I know. But Galadriel is played by... <laughs> what? That's how his name is pronounced. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, is played by... Who is? Galadriel. Okay. Is played by a Welsh actress, uh, Morfid Clark. Um, I think that's how you say her name. I heard her talk about it's it on Clark. Twitter. Mor- Morfit. And she's fantastic. She's basically like the lead actress here. And the the story is taking place at kind of during the rise of Sauron. He he has not like the rings haven't been all the rings of power and stuff have not been made yet. And this is taking place after a war against Morgoth who was like the big bad and then he was defeated Sauron was his oh my, Jeremy's pretending to fall asleep Sauron was his like <laughs> second in command I guess and now he's starting to rise in power and the orcs are coming back and everything and Middle Earth is in trouble um, and anyway we're only two episodes in but I'm really really loving it and 
One of the cast members that you guys both would recognize is uh, Benjamin Walker, who plays a Blinken in A Blinken Vampire Hunter. He's the, the elven king in the show. Anyway, I love it. And I think that fans of Lord of the Rings will really enjoy am, this show. I mean, how many? Is, sure like, they will. Like, how old is, like, Gimli and some of, like, how many of these, like, how many of these elves, like, shouldn't well, the Orlando elves are... Bloom be back, too? No. No? Because Galadriel's very young in this. And, but even then, she's centuries old. So, like, the elves are kind of immortal mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Right. So... So where are the other ones that I'm asking like about? Like Liv Tyler they maybe and... haven't been born yet, or I don't know. Well, you're just saying it's a couple centuries before. I'm just saying like yeah. most of the characters. Well, wasn't Orlando Bloom like 400 years old? Right. That's what I'm saying. Well, maybe we'll meet him or a young him at some point. I don't An know. Older, younger him. Or... <laughs> I'm really enjoying the show, and it's very much up my alley. And I think that other fans of Lord of the Rings will enjoy this return to Middle Earth. You guys go enjoy that Middle Earth. You're obnoxious. And <laughs> yes. I always have been. Going to the other fantasy series, House of the Dragon. House of Dragons. House of the Dragon. I know we're going to have a bit of a time jump and a recast of some of the younger actors. So like Rhaenyra and Alison Hightower are both going to be played by different actresses in the coming episodes as their older versions. So I don't oh, know. Oh, they're jumping? Yes. Interesting. I... Yeah, I, I don't, try not to read up or watch. I don't know how much of a time jump it is, but I do know. I know. Uh, yeah, it was it's not just a, a step to the left or a hop to the left and a step to the right. And the, the the time. twelve like the it's the time the, warp, the uh, Valyrian or or Val Val Valacor. I forget their last name. The one that he was gonna maybe marry. Mm-hmm. Corliss. Corliss. Corliss? Yeah. Corliss. Oh, okay. Corliss. This lady, yeah. like an alien or like that, but the, yeah. the house Corliss. House Corliss. Okay. So their two kids are also being recast to older versions. Of themselves. Well, yeah, she's like 10. Yeah. Now, it was good to know that she went to bed until she's 14. So you know, <laughs> that, that's always positive. At least positive. there's that. Yeah. So kudos. Well, thankfully, he did not choose to go that route. Uh, he chose wisely. Yeah. He's a wise king. I mean, she's still 15, the one he's choosing, but. Better than 10. Yeah. We'll take it. Well, he said she was 12, but she looked 10. All right. And then very quickly, Frank, you and I watched the first few episodes of The Patient and The Bear. That's uh, right. Both on Hulu, both FX shows. So you've only watched one episode of The Bear? No. So we watched two, two episodes. episodes of The Bear and two episodes of The Patient. Okay. I've not watched Patient, so I'm going to skip to The Bear. What do you think? I'm in. This is right up my alley. It's fast. Fast. It's fast paced. A lot of vulgar language, food. Chef culture. Crazy characters. Just crazy characters. I don't know what to make out of Richie and Carmi's relationship. I, I, but it I, draws you in. I'm, I'm hooked. Yeah. I am hooked. Okay. I will continue to watch. I think I'm about six or seven episodes in. Yeah. So I'm a little ahead of you, but yeah, it's the pacing is, I said, I was trying to explain to you guys before. The way it's shot is very almost grainy. Yeah. Very. It almost looks like it's on film. Right. Yeah. It looks film. Looks. I won't say amateur, but it looks like older, like seventy style film style. But I said to Frank, it's really well choreographed with the way that oh, the, the camera's is... moving and the timing of the actors moving through a very tight, tight space. space. Yeah. 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 It's. People don't estimate how difficult that probably was to pull off. I'm sure. And how many takes that yeah. probably took? Because it's it's very fluid. It's very everything is always. Mo- it's not a one shot, but it yeah. feels one shot at times. Yeah, I I really liked it. I think Frank liked it more than me, just because that's a little bit more his thing. But well, it's food. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, I definitely understand the the appeal of it for folks. Well, the acting is great. I mean, from your standpoint, the acting is great. Yes. The, the way it's shot is great. Yeah. The dialogue is great. The characters are portrayed well yeah, yeah there's a and there's, food yeah there's a lot to uncover there with carmy and his background in fine dining and his mental demons and what we saw in the first episode so you've only seen the first two. First two i think the it's the third one unless i'm wrong yeah. the third one actually has a back flash to mikey okay oh, okay so we get to meet mikey which you'll love who plays mikey oh Okay. We we were kind of geeking out over Joel McHale playing the asshole executive chef. Yeah. That was fun. And then Oliver Platt yeah. showing up. Yeah, yeah, Oliver Platt 
Uh, well, then trying to break legs. Yeah. What was that? I'm like, ooh, he's a gangster. Oliver Platt's a badass. Oliver Platt's a badass. That was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, you and, do you want me to ruin it for you? No. no. Don't. No. And but I won't. Don't. What were some of the other... That moment when he's like yelling at the video game players and he calls them, you Snyder Cut mother, at whatever it was. I paused that. Just to Ma- laugh? No. Well, yes. But Francesca was upstairs or in the back. I, somewhere else. I'm like, I need you to come back down and see this. Because she was, I'm like, and then she sat and she watched the rest of the episode because she just hates that fanboy fandom yeah. where you can like change the, like, the, and get a movie made, so to speak. So it was really funny for her. Um, and then the, the, like I said, the patient, which we watched the first two episodes, the drop starring Steve Carell and Domal Gleason and only Steve Carell, uh, essentially yes, so far, yeah. <laughs> um, Domal Gleason like, is a serial killer and is, has kidnapped, um, Steve Carell's, uh, therapist character to try and help him keep him from killing people. Sounds like a serious analyze this, analyze that very much so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like. Also, in this case, it looks like he's a food inspector because he brings home these very elaborate meals and explains it to him like this Thai restaurant or this Indian food or different things like that. And then explains how they do things the so way that they do. Food was good, food, too. Food. Yeah. Food, 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 food yeah. is a theme. Yeah. Two to foods. be a theme here. Also, really short episodes, about 20 minutes long. I think you'll really – you'll you'll sink into this Well, one. even the bear is only, I yeah. think, 24 yeah. minutes maybe. Yeah. yeah. They're short. They're, they're short bursts. You – it caught me off guard because this is definitely not a comedy, but oh, the no, fact de- that it's a drama and it's 20 minutes long, it was like, wow, this is different. a lot of intensity in 20 minutes. Yeah, it's it it's, is. it's definitely action packed for two guys sitting in a room talking about <laughs> things. It's well, crazy. We've had as a lot of sounds. intensity in this room. There's a couple of us sitting here that talking. We have. This is true. All right. Well, I think that's it for what we've watched so far. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about. Anonymous. Yeah. Anonymous. You're listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and Everything in Between with your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. Admit it or not. Well. In my story, you're the villain. Because your tastes are ridiculous in the movies. Oh my God. Your tastes are ridiculous. Mine are great. Do you think we agreed on this movie? I don't know. Let's find out, guys. We All are right. back. and Anonymous? On Anonymous. All right. We can do a count of three. You can put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We'll see where we're at. Well, that's not going to help for... Well, we can, we we can, can vocalize it. Vocalize this. it. All right. Of course. All right. We have... Use our words, Francesca. All right. Yeah. All right. One, two, three. Thumbs, thumbs up. up. Unanimous. Yes, we all hated it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this movie came out in 2011. Who's the director? Who's the director? Who's the director? For Ro- Roland Emmerich. Some insane. Yeah, Roland Emmerich. All right. The, yes. The, yeah, I knew something. The guy who is famous for disaster movies it directed Anonymous, <laughs> which wasn't a disaster. It was not. No. Um, it took a lot of twists and turns. It was all over the place. It really was. It bounces from here, there, before, 40 years ago, five years before that. Yeah. 30 years before the five years, before the four years. So it's- so here's the thing. This movie is centered around the conspiracy theory that William Shakespeare did not write his 37-ish plays. There's there's some dis... Uh, a thousand sonnets. sonnets. Yeah. 154 120 sonnets. Plays, yeah. Po- yeah. Um, there are several theories out there about who could have written um, these works. This conspiracy theory is based on the fact that he was from Stratford-upon-Avon, which is a very small and kind of secluded town in England that, um, you know, people argued, you know, he he wouldn't have had all this knowledge of faraway lands. And he was illiterate. He couldn't write. People, uh, the entire read, rest of his, the read, entire rest write, of yeah. his family and uh, his wife and children were all illiterate. So people were like, this doesn't make sense that he wasn't. I have visited his supposed school in Stratford-upon-Avon. I, I went there, but there's those out there who like to say that he there's what no proof that he went brag there that was <laughs> i will say that you know i don't know i'm not gonna say that it's accurate or real right i'm not gonna pretend that it is but if it were it's a more compelling and more fun story 
It's a more interesting story. It's interesting. I mean, so this particular, there's several conspiracy theories out there about who would have written it. This particular film posits that it was Edward de Vere, um, Earl of Oxford. This theory has existed for some time, despite the fact that the real Edward de Vere died before Macbeth and Hamlet and a couple of other ones. Well, that's explained. I mean... That he everything was pre everything was pre written yes, and what's interesting is I believe Roland Emmerich believes this theory. You know who else believes that Shakespeare at least that Shakespeare did not write his his work? Keanu Reeves. Interesting. Yeah, that's a weird poll. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I read it. it was, I was watching an interview or something, and somebody was like, "What's like one question that you like would love to know the answer to, or something?" And he was like, "I would love to know who actually wrote Shakespeare's work." <laughs> there you go. And the other thing that they talk about in the film is the fact, and just in general, that actors of the time were very much not great thinkers, right? They right. just, they read other people's words and they, they were, were able to, pretty. They, exactly. And they were able to embody the characters on stage, but they didn't have the time to write and then learn their lines and all of those they other were things. They were Victorian era Zoolanders. Yes. Yeah. And. And obviously, as most people know, before he became the most famous playwright of all time, Shakespeare was, in fact, an, an actor. actor. And this movie essentially is a we're, we're supposed to be watching a play like it starts in present day. So that's what kind of got me is it, it was actually a really cool way they did that. Yeah. Starts off modern time. You have the priest from Fifth Element you know, <laughs> opening, the, opening the monologue. This is anonymous. <laughs> and then it just kind of just seamlessly goes into yeah. the past. Yeah. It goes, you know, 500 years in the past, and then all of a sudden it goes 40 years before that, and then three years earlier. Did you find earlier. the time jumps hard to follow? Initially. Yeah. Was that a point? In the beginning, it's hard to follow who the hell's who. Right, right. And a, a couple I, of the characters look alike. A lot of them look alike. And yes. they're not who they're playing. Right. Yeah. Yes. So initially, it's very confusing, but at some point in the movie, it all kind of clicks. Yeah. And you just automatically know who everybody is all of a sudden. I found it much easier the second time around knowing because the first time I was like, wait, he's them and he's that's not, what? He's <laughs> not. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it, it's not immediate. Yeah. It's the first hour. You're confused. Yes. There's like, okay, back and forth. And, and there's this. no clear delineation when they're switching between the times. It's just. Because well, we start on well, the Ben only, Johnson the being. Only, like interrogated for the plays. Right. The only way to tell the time jumps is the only way that I saw, and I think it's intentional, was David Thules. Yeah. Yes. Is how, if he's, is he young or is he old? Right. Yeah. That's the only, he's, he's in every scene that flashes yes. forward and backwards. Yeah. So you just look at him. Okay. Now we're in this time period based on him. Yeah. And I mean, the difference too between Vanessa Redgrave and Jolie Richardson playing the older yeah. and the younger versions of Queen Elizabeth. I, I remember the first time that Frank had me watch this, I informed him, did you know that they're mother and daughter? Well, there's a lot of mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, she's saying in, in real, real life. life. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of maternal stuff going there on in this movie. This. <laughs> But I thought that that was interesting because she does, she looks very much like her mother. Yes. So yeah. I liked that they had that. Connection. Yeah. The one thing that was funny is, you know, last week, you know, Frank mentioned, yeah, wait for the twist of the, the five minutes left in the movie. No, Frank, it's half an hour left yeah, in the movie. Yeah, it's half an hour left in the movie. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I got the timeline wrong. <laughs> yeah. That twist comes, yeah, about yeah. 30 minutes. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. Didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah, that twist comes out of nowhere and just slaps you right in the face. It comes out of nowhere. From the, like, oh, <laughs> so For that's, where, that's no, where we're going? No reason other than just to like... Shock you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, just to fuck you up. It, there's no yeah. reason. It's just all of a sudden, okay. Are we doing this? Do we want... We, the movie's we, 11 years old. Do we want to spoil it for people? No. Only because it's 11 years old, but it's not a mainstream movie. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I, I hadn't seen it. I, so. have, I have held on to this. And I am I am king spoiler alert without you even are. realizing it most of the but time. But you held on to this real tight so for, for me at least. Between for the three of us, we him. can discuss off the air. But yeah, I don't I don't I would say not to because yeah. it's not that popular of a movie, right? That people would have already seen it by but now. The cast in this movie, the cast is incredible. We've got Reese Siphons, Vanessa Redgrave, David Thewlis, Xavier Samuel, Jolie Richardson, Jamie Campbell Bower, Mark Rylance. Yeah. Mark Rylance just randomly just showing up yeah. as, a, as a globe actor. <laughs> and then um, Jamie Campbell Bauer 
plays a major character in the newest season of Stranger Things. Yeah. So he's having a bit of a career renewal. This was with before that role. I really fell in love with him in uh, Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Um, that was 2013, 2012? 12 or thir- 13, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that. Yeah, you felt hard for Jace. I really did. Character. No. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was well done. I mean, I. I I enjoy the way it went from modern times to the kind of old Victorian times and yeah. just told a story. And honestly, if that's the real story, it's interesting. It's a fun story to, it's a fun theory. One yeah, way regardless or the other. of, you know, how you and feel about the conspiracy theory, I think it tells an interesting story. There's like five story. different conspiracies going on at once here. There exactly. is. Exactly. That's yeah. the whole thing. It's, it's a lot, a lot of moving parts here. In fact, Shakespeare has what, five minutes of airtime? Yeah, yeah, he's barely in it. Will is barely in the film. He's not important yeah. to yeah. the movie about William Shakespeare. Yeah, even yeah. like Christopher Marlowe, who many people posit was the real writer of the Shakespeare works, um, has a larger role, I would argue, in just his impact than Shakespeare. Was it? Well, it, yeah. the character there's is no called... Shakespeare in the Shakespeare yeah. movie. Yeah, it's yeah. called Kit. Is Kit Marlowe is yeah. who they talk about? Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, like we said, Ben Johnson, who became the first. Poet, poet laureate, laureate. Poet laureate. yeah it looked pretty cool very right? interesting and we like we've talked about this before we love these fun fictionalized maybe fictionalized it's, like, it's almost like marvel what if yeah yeah <laughs> thanks for that uh, uh <laughs> historical drama pieces and yeah i'm just i wasn't there yeah. so i can't say exactly and uh francesco is really digging on Reese with his uh, his smoky eye. Oh going. yeah, that was working for me. With Much the beard more than and the, the smoke. His, <laughs> his uh, tidy whities in Notting Hill, but... or in the replacements. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, one line though that I w- just want to call attention to because it, I thought it was really excellent. Reese Ifans' character says, "All art is political; otherwise, it would just be decoration." And I think that that today even resonates more so because we always have these arguments where people are like, "When did movies get so political and TV shows blah blah?" And it's like it's always been political. Since, yeah, since the, the dawn, dawn of, time. of writing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when when once they first... the first picture was drawn, exactly. <laughs> once when they arrest Ben for the first, or they they capture Ben, not arrest him, and they have you been arrested? He's like, "I'm, I'm a, a writer. Playwright. Of yeah. course, I've been arrested." Uh, it's just it's so poignant that line that you're talking about and it's really important for people to understand that and it was really cool that edward earl of oxford saw the impact he's like how many people were there two thousand how many times did they do that five five or six he's like ten thousand people ten thousand people that's power like the fact that he recognized that and knew that his voice in this case needed to be heard and and then when you hear those other playwrights talk about like your words are the most incredible words I've ever seen performed on stage. And the fact that they have still ha- like stood the test of time 500 years later, it's it's just a peach. I really enjoy this movie. A peach. I'm so glad that you liked it. I was worried that I was going to come in here and have to fight. I've seen it three times now. I've not been bored, even with the twist, any of the three times. No, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. So, it is a good movie. I'm not sure. But it is canned. I, I like good movies. It's only got a 46% from critics and a 53% from Can we use the Wes audiences. Anderson defense? And it also, yes. <laughs> they, it, you might be right. There might be a level of like attention that people don't pay to the time jumping and the convolutedness of it, so to speak, that they have a hard time you just following don't get it. it. You don't yeah, understand it. You don't understand it. <laughs> Which is the most annoying thing I any know. Wes Anderson fan in the world says, but... In this case, I think it may. I think the movie was made for thirty million dollars. I don't think it recouped its budget. No, I don't don't care. I don't think it's meant though to be this big, uh, you know, profound work, so to speak. I I think it's somewhere between a think piece of just putting forth this interesting conspiracy theory. You can take it for what it is or not, um, and just a a good you know costume picture it's, yeah. it's your three musketeers era yeah. slash you know man in the iron mask yeah type movie exactly um i do want to say good on jolie richardson she was 45 at the time of filming this and jamie campbell bauer was 22 so and they have some some love scenes and uh yeah good on her <laughs> 22 year difference I'm, yeah. I'm here for it 23 i thought it'd be more but, like a 16 yeah. year difference but 
22 sure. makes yeah. sense, I guess. At least it, I don't know what they were meant to be, in the, but that's at the time of filming. That's how Six, old they were. 16. I think I, I think I read that somewhere. 16. <laughs> Who knew Elizabeth was a hoe? Oh, that's, I mean, I mean, yeah, she's one of the greatest rulers of yeah, all time. But the, the Elizabethan era, I mean, yeah. And, going out west to have her babies and then bastard like that is some bot shit that most women can't pull off to know if that's her child or not right yeah. she has no idea i mean she in, was in the case she, of this she was this kind film. of renowned as like the virgin queen because right that's what i thought yeah. right and it turns so out much. that like it comes out later that like the first time that it happened she was like 16 yeah. right that she hoed I mean, that's around what they're they're that's posing. what they're positing in this film. Like, yeah. yeah. Don't know but that it's are, accurate. There have long been rumors about lovers that she had. And, if you're know. the queen, you're the queen. Yeah, right? Just like as you're the you. King, as you she can... says, I'm the queen, I can do, do what it. I want. Yeah. <laughs> I demand that you leave my chambers. Yeah. God, what a boss. I, that's what I'm saying to you the next time I want you to get out of the bedroom. <laughs> I demand you to leave my chamber. How can you like refuse? Yeah. Right? That's, that's a, I mean, you're going to laugh first and then leave. That's what's exactly. going to happen. You know you screwed up. <laughs> you know what you did. Yeah. You know At that why. Point, you, know. you know why. <laughs> All right. Anything else on Anonymous before we move on no we'll talk off air okay yeah we don't want to spoil anything but we do recommend you watch it it is not available on any streaming services but you can rent it uh i think it was 3.99 on amazon so a bargain at any price (laughs) all right so jeremy now it is your turn to task frank with a category for our next spotlight film well we spent the first hour and a half or so it seems like (laughs) about an hour yeah discussing all the fall movies and shows and whatnot so I figured I would give Frank a movie that involved the fall. The season, the autumn. The season. The season. Specifically, fall. not falling. Yeah, not fall guy. Not, <laughs> yeah. no, not I the understand. movie fall, which we just saw. <laughs> Although it'd be fun to have Jeremy watch that one. That would be. Which one? Fall. You'll watch it later. Yeah, you, Mr. I? I'm Afraid of Heights? No, yeah. he's not going to oh, watch that. Oh, that one? No. Yeah. yeah. No. I think, I, I watch it at home. I think you'd enjoy it. It's it's a well-made, it looks, no. You're going to have a heart attack. No. All right. So... I've narrowed it down to two, and this is really hard for me because I hope one of them I know <laughs> you'll be really happy with, and the other one you'll accept, me but you won't specifically. be you okay. specifically. Pick the one that makes her unhappy. Pick the one that ma- no, she she likes that one. It just doesn't make it won't make her heart sing. <laughs> it won't make my heart sing. Okay, so what a <laughs> wild thing. <laughs> I'll, and I'll make it as simple as this: she has a tattoo for one of them, so it's very easy to know which one. So I'm I'm between Halloween, That's the original. The one I have a tattoo for John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Myers, which I would be thrilled with. And the other one, again, you're not going to be mad. Is October Sky? See, I have a, I have a tattoo of that. Yes, <laughs> this is true. So now. <laughs> Um, between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Do you have just a rocket shooting? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right on your shoulder blade no, there? No, yeah. no. No. Yeah, I've got a clear preference. <laughs> Wait, do you not like October Sky? It's fine. But it's got Laura Dern and, and, and Chris Jake Cooper Gyllenhaal. and Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Is it to borrow your phrase, perfectly average? Kind Aggressively of okay? In my opinion. Aggressively okay? Like, oh, I, man. Now I, I want to pick it just so I can convince you that you're wrong. No, here's the, like, I I like the movie. I think it's a little overloved. Overloved? Yeah. I've never heard anybody say they loved it. <laughs> I have, but. Oh, well, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Homer Hickam. Come on. The West Virginia Hick that gets to go work at NASA by the end. It's It's a great, like story to think about versus halloween a movie that is so prolific to the slasher genre and almost created uh, it it, to to some near perfect film from john carpenter who was so annoyed with his composer he just decided to do the score himself can we compromise sure and watch halloween season of the witch (laughs) You know, I would love to do that simply because Francesca hasn't right. seen that one. That's my only point, just to throw a wrench in the whole work. And just because I think that this movie gets a lot of unfair hate because it's people were expecting like a Michael Myers Halloween film. Yeah, we'll do Season of the Witch. Oh, Boom. I'll, I'll let it happen. Damn, all right. I'm, I'm a, down to watch it. I've been wanting you, you to. You have not seen it for uh, before, right? No, I haven't. 
And I this will this will be interesting because we can just talk about. I've seen most of the other Halloween movies. But we. I'm not picking H two O. I'm sorry. I don't have the tattoo. I've seen all the movies. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen uh the the one where he's in Manhattan. That's Jason. <laughs> yeah. No, there's one about Michael Myers in Manhattan too. I don't don't think so. Yeah, there is. I think Jason goes to Resurrection. Manhattan. No, I've seen Resurrection. Season um, of the Witch takes place in Manhattan, but he's not in it. Spoiler alert! <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> I think it's the, the movie's forty years the, old. No, the curse one I've seen. Halloween four I've seen. I think it's Revenge. Oh no, Revenge of Michael Myers I've seen. And no, it's, so it's the curse one I haven't seen. Right. The curse yeah. of Michael Myers in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Michael Myers is not. In he's the, not in that. That's the whole reason why this the movie curse, gets the curse of Michael Myers. That's like the in 1995. It's like the okay. fifth one, I think. Oh, the curse of Michael Myers. He's in New York. I thought he was. I don't think so. I I could, I could be wrong about the setting, but anyway, season of the witch is streaming on Peacock. So well, along wait, with wait, the rest wait, of the what channel? Peacock. <laughs> Uh, so we can watch that there, which is, I'm um, actually kind of excited. I think you're going to, again, I need you to separate the fact that Michael Myers is not in this. Is Michael Myers in this I one? I know he's not in it. I, I know, know, but that. I need you to separate from the fact That's that okay. he's not in it. That's okay. Just pretend it's a, it's a Halloween movie, not Halloween the movie. Right. Not Halloween the series. Yeah. It's a Halloween movie. Yeah. Um, all right. Which so is we're gonna... the, like, the quintessential fall holiday. So. It's the best fall holiday. It yeah. really is. So and we're going to watch Halloween Season of the Witch on Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just as a recap for some of the other stuff we talked about, The Sandman is on Netflix. Miss Marvel and She-Hulk are both on Disney+. Plus. The Rings of Power is on Amazon Prime. House of the Dragon on HBO Max. And The Patient and the Bear are both on Hulu. Yes. And again, you can rent Anonymous on Amazon or any of your other rental platforms that you have available. Yes. But more importantly, go to yeah. Spotify or whoever. Listen to this podcast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't watch those boring movies. Yeah. All right, guys. Anything we'll tell else? you all about the films. But if they're listening to hear me say that, they don't need me to say that. So yeah. this is true. Tell Mind your friends. Blown. Tell your wow. friends. Tell your family. Wow. You just created a grandfather paradox for a podcast. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys. Mind blown. That's Episode a... done. <laughs> Talk hard. That's a wrap. You've been listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and Everything in Between with Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. With the entertainment space as crowded as it is now, it's nice to have a podcast that doesn't hold back their takes from new releases to older movies. And everything in between, we got you covered. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And until next time, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And we can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and iHeart. See you next time on Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. <laughs>